going to be joined by Tarzan Nickel. Good story in this edition of the Northern Miner on Tarzan. So you can also read more about what the company is up to there. We're joined by Mark Appleby, who is president and CEO. Let me tell you a little bit about Mark. He was appointed president and CEO and member of the board for Tartazan in December of 2010. He has over 30 years of experience in a variety of disciplines relating to investment banking, corporate finance, and the capital markets. Mark began his career in 1983 where he served as an intern at Manulife in the equity and fixed in income departments. In 87, he joined First Boston Canada, where he reached the position of VP of bond trading. Subsequent to that, he's worked as an investment executive at Scotia McLeod and as co-founder of the Atlantis Group, which is a company specializing in a variety of disciplines, including the resource sector. He also was the director of Guyana Goldfields for five years. Mark, welcome to the Global Mining Symposium. Well, thank you, Anthony, for having me. Well, it's nice to have you. Where are you joining us from? Well, I'm about two hours north of Toronto, um, in the Skoka at the moment, actually. We're having a bit of an, our own little investor conference up here, um, meeting with uh, about a dozen different people over the last day or so. Excellent. Good for you. I was up in Muskoka on the weekend. It's such a beautiful part of the world and a great place to be meeting with investors. So listen, Mark, I will turn it over to you and I will come back at the end and we'll uh, pepper you with a few questions. Excellent. Well, thank you for having me today. Welcome, everyone. Uh, the name of our company is Tartazan Nickel Corp. We're a CSC listed uh, company, uh, stock symbol TN. Uh, our our flagship asset is the Kenbridge Nickel Project in Northwestern Ontario. Uh, we have three critical metals, nickel, copper, and cobalt. And we essentially classify ourselves as a small class CapEx class one nickel project. Uh, there is a current mineral resource estimate on the entire property, which outlines about 8 million tons grading 0.62% nickel, 0.32% copper, with over a million tons of inferred uh, grading in excess of 1%. Now that equates to roughly about 118 million pounds of nickel, 66 million pounds of copper. Um, you can see our land position here. We're just very close to uh, New Gold's Rainy River Gold Project. We have a 4,100 odd hectare land position. Uh, we're just off of the Trans-Canada Highway. You can see our patented claims here in purple. There is an existing 622 meter shaft on this property and this has never been mined. This was a former Falcon Bridge asset that was developed from the 1950s uh, with the, the latest developer being Canadian Aero Mines, which had it from roughly 2008 to 2012. Tartazan acquired this property uh, in 2018 through plan of arrangement from Canadian Aero Mines. And since that time, we've been doing a variety of things, including updating all of the historical documentation, uh, refreshing our relationships with uh, First Nations. We are part of Treaty Number 3, as well as in 2021, we had our first pass exploration program where we drilled over 11,000 meters. You can see here just some surface infrastructure. Uh, the top right, you can see that there's an existing camp at site, uh, sleeps roughly 75 people. Um, prior to last year, this was sort of a fly in, fly out type of situation. There, there was a brush road and we've since been rehabilitating that brush road, put turning it into an all season road to have greater access. Um, so with the camp being here, that's a, roughly about a one kilometer subtle walk up, the, up a hill. Uh, the star that you saw on the previous page, which represented that 122 meter shaft, uh, is right here on the center of the page. And you can see some massive sulfides exposed at surface. Uh, not a lot of overburden in this area. Um, with the road going in now and sort of three quarters complete, this is going to be a, a readily accessible project. Uh, again, just off of the Trans-Canada Highway, um, off of the feeder road to the former Sandgold Mayburn Mine. 
you can see that uh, uh, a, 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 a subsequent MRE was done uh, with regards to the underground and for the purposes of our PEA. And this essentially outlined uh, about four and a half million tons of ore, which we, which we will be using and have found to be economic uh, in an underground mining strategy. You can see that this is somewhat sensitive, obviously, to the, the price of the price of, of nickel. And a lot of the numbers that you're, you're going to be seeing on these slides are all found within the PEA and they're all on CEDAR. Some of the financial highlights of the, of the PEA that just came out um, is that it envisioned uh, a revenue stream of, of essentially $837 million. Uh, initial capital costs of about 134 million to put into production and 226 million uh, capital costs life of mine. Um, all of these economics turned into to decent returns for investor, potential investors here with IRR pre-tax of roughly 26% and NPV of 110 million after tax IRR of 20%. So you know, we, again, we classify ourselves as a low CapEx. So to put this into production, $134 million, roughly as outlined to put, put this project, the Kenbridge Nickel project into production. Uh, the PEA essentially envisioned a base case of $10 nickel. Um, and you can see that the payback periods uh, dramatically increase as the price of or decrease as the price of nickel increases. So a payback period of roughly 3.4 years using $10 nickel price. And if you go to $12 nickel, uh, the payback period goes to 2.8 years. And for the rate, for the more bullish in the crowd, $15 nickel gets you to roughly a 2.2 year payback. So some pretty interesting dynamics here. You can see sort of a preliminary production profile and on the right side of the page, this in, the PEA underground uh, envisions a 1500 ton per day to go to a 2000 ton per day uh, mine, uh, creating two different concentrates, a nickel and a copper concentrate. You can see this, the shaft here going down 622 meters, various stopes and block, and the mining would be block, going down in blocks down to the, bottom, the base of the shaft and then ramping down further. This is just an initial CapEx summary, just essentially showing how the money will be spent and essentially OPEX, total operating costs um, of the underground development. So just a little bit of geology because everyone needs their daily dose here, but this is essentially what happened in the 2021 um, drill campaign. Uh, so the left side of the page, this representing the surface, the green here representing the current block model, and right here representing the shaft going down 622 meters. There were some very interesting conductors that were identified. Um, and so what we wanted to do was test this down dip extension and see whether or not the mineralization continued at depth and along strike. And in fact, it did. Uh, there were some pretty interesting conductors here I, that were identified coming into sort of some semi-massive sulfides and allowing us through borehole geophysics last year to better uh, direct the drill going forward. So essentially what we're trying to do here is expand the resource and improve the mine life. Uh, currently, roughly nine million uh, nine year mine life, and given the fact that we upgraded the resource last year by roughly twenty percent, um, going forward here into twenty twenty three with our next uh, with our next drilling program, what we're going to try and do is expand the mine life um, and keep going at depth. Previous to last year's. Um, last year's drill program, the deepest hole was roughly 825 meters. And now we're down to roughly 1100 meters, just over a thousand meters here on, on these, these deeper holes and came up with some pretty interesting grades below surface. 
uh, at these at these new depths. Three point one eight percent nickel, for example, over a meter with uh, 0.2 copper. We have uh, some other holes here that uh, 0.7 nickel over six meters, 0.82 nickel over three meters. So this is just a different view of what we've just looked at, but essentially here looking at the top uh, right, this little square here is where we're trying to continue to build the mineralization at depth. And so essentially putting drills into this, into this area here to further impact the resource. Uh, this is a gabbro style deposit. It's sort of very different than what you would see on sort of the Western and the sort of the, the Timmins style of camp. This is sort of, what you, sort of a clumpier deposit and a higher grade as opposed to a, a lower grade, you know, much larger tonnage. You can see here, this is just airborne geophysics, but uh, sort of allowing you to see that there's more than one carrot stick in the patch here. Um, other blue sky on the property. So these bluey prints here represent the geophysical characteristics of what we saw at the main resource and where that where the shaft is. You can see over the sort of the north end of the property, similar geophysical characteristics. And what we've done is um, put some grids, cut some, uh, done some line cutting here uh, to tee this up for geophysics later this fall and then in the winter. And what we'd like to do is drill uh, sort of the west and the east target. We did manage to put a couple of drill holes in here uh, last summer and uh, came up with similar rock type, similar geophysical characteristics as what's on the main deposit. So we're hoping that there's, uh, there's some additional targets here and some additional tonnage that potentially can be added to the project. You can just sort of see the, a basic budget going forward. Uh, we have already started baseline studies here going into pre-feasibility. Um, and this budget gets us into the early summer of 2023. So what we're going to be calling for here is another round of drilling, 8,000 odd meters plus worth of drilling coming into this, uh, into the, into the winter season here. Uh, we'd like to do some drilling uh, in the winter because we can do some of this from the ice surface as well as on those northern targets, um, get better maneuver the drill. Um, it calls for the, the, the finalization of the road. You can see there's a million dollar line item in here to continue with the pre-feasibility and there should be some interesting uh, future updates on the company with regards to um, sort of a production scenario. Next steps on the project, essentially we wanna continue with the sort of the extensional and the exploratory drilling. Uh, I did mention that the baseline environmental studies commenced in the spring of 2022. Uh, very important because that essentially starts the clock ticking here and allows us to sort of set a timeline in a production scenario. Uh, we can envision this, uh, some production a decision being made and going into feasibility sort of in the next uh, 12 months or so with, a, with potential for a production scenario here at Kenbridge in the next three years. Uh, we're continuing to assess these regional targets. Uh, we continue to uh, speak with all our local communities and they're actively engaged with the project. We do have some First Nations um, working with us on the project and we're gonna continue to on with some geophysical studies to better direct the drill. You can see here, this is just a mock-up of what, uh, what we think our future holds. We are, we are putting together sort of a four and a half minute 3D visualization of the whole project that should be ready in the next few weeks. Um, so keep following Tartizan and uh, our website and, and future announcements, uh, tartizannickel.com um, for further details and uh, certainly a uh, seeing the underground in 3D and, and how it will all be mined is, is fascinating, I think, for, for, your, for the audience here. Uh, you can just see some very basic corporate information. Roughly um, 
109 million shares out, 120 million fully diluted, um, roughly a $28 million market cap today. We do have some cash and some strategic holdings on the books. Uh, market values today, roughly $5 million, which has allowed us to avoid some dilution um, in these uh, sort of uncertain times. And I, everyone's sort of had a bit of a tough go in the last uh, six months or so with inflation, rising inflation fears and sort of a risk off in the market. Um, we will be coming to the market at some point to do, to do a raise. Uh, but we sort of envision doing that in the latter part of um, this year. With that, I can sort of hand it back to you and um, happy to entertain any questions. All right. Thank you very much, Mark, for a really solid presentation there. I guess the first one is you set it off at the top, right? The Tartazan has exposure to nickel, copper, and cobalt. So let's have a little bit of fun with that. Which of those three do you think will outperform over the next five year period and why? Well, I think, uh, I think nickel is the, is sort of the metal here. Um, I mean, I think with global demand and with the whole EV cycle kicking in, uh, I think, um, I think demand is going to outstrip supply. I mean, we're already starting to see some of that, uh, some of that now and sort of an underpinning coming in now to, to the metal price. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, go ahead. I was just going to say, so nickel's your call on this one. Nickel's my call on this one, yes. And nickel sulfide and our projects such as this are so, so rare that I know the, uh, the global investment community gets excited when they're, uh, when we can scope out feasibility. I also wanted to get your take staying with the nickel market because it has been a historic year for nickel. Um, and for me and for a lot of people, the most probably one of the most outrageous things that I've seen in the last five years uh, was what, hap what happened with the LME canceling nickel contracts, contract, basically because of Singshan's uh, short position. And, and it went on that run. And of course, China controls the LME as a majority shareholder. Give us your take on that. How Were you equally outraged or what was your, what was your opinion on that? Well, I guess short squeeze is a short squeeze. I think, you know, outraged in the sense that I'm, uh, not sure why people get let off the hook. There seems to be a couple of different sets of rules, but I think they're going to. Uh, I think they're going to continue to make moves to bring credibility to to the whole uh, to the playing field, shall we say, and make it a level playing field. And um, I mean, I know some of the larger players, um, um, you know, have expressed their concerns, and I, I think they'll rule the day. I mean, the market seems to have bombed itself now and sort of acting uh, is, is better behaved now. Sure. Well, let's hope that that continues and we don't see anything like that again. <laughs> and it does feel a little bit like they got let off the hook, which I'm a bit distraught about. Uh, you mentioned uh, the, the community relations there, that things are going well, obviously so critical. I mean, on one hand, we have this in a risk-off environment, projects in Canada and Ontario get more of a shine relative to other parts of the world. We're seeing a lot of Australian capital coming in and developing projects there. But these Indigenous relations are absolutely critical. What are some of the key steps that you find uh, help determine a more successful uh, social license and more successful relationships with the Indigenous communities around your project? Yeah, I mean, certainly in our area, we're involved with uh, minimally five different First Nations groups. Uh, communication is, is paramount. Um, we have had uh, the First Nations to the project um, last summer and had over 40 different participants actually on site. Uh, we did a lunch and learn, a Q&A with them. We had a, uh, a ceremonial blessing of the project and we actually took them uh, to see a drill uh, turning on site. Um, and interestingly enough, 90, I'd say 95% of them had never seen a drill actually in action. So it was a real opportunity for them to gain a better understanding of the project and of the people that are involved here. Um, you know, and again, you know, Canadian Era was an orig original signatory to Treaty Number 3, and certainly we've you know, we've, we are part of that treaty now, Tartazan Nickel Corp, and it's, I can just say that engagement and being available to answer questions uh, and, or concerns and being able to um, participate 
uh, you know, <clears throat> on on site, shall we say, um, and go to meetings is 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 key because uh, it, it's again the communication aspect and being able to um, to to show everyone exactly what's going on and and be able to answer any questions is is literally paramount in in you know in helping them understand the whole the goals of the project and what we're up to excellent well said mark i mean it's not really rocket science right it's about rolling up your sleeves communicating being transparent i like to hear that that they you've had members of the communities out to the see the drill rigs i think things like that are absolutely critical and it's just about making sure as an industry we're being diligent and we're taking those steps so that's great congratulations on the progress so far Hope to see uh, more continued success for you and your team going forward. Thanks very much for joining us from Muskoka today. Well, thank you very much, Anthony, and thanks to all the viewers. Happy to uh, answer any questions. Or if you go to info at tartazannickel.com, please send me an email. Excellent. Thanks so much, Mark. Take care. Thank you.